Welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Power podcast. I'm your host, Julia Renee. And Kendall Aaliyah. And today, guys, we have a new series. Woo! Woo woo! <laughs> Kendall, tell them about the series. Because I don't want We're to. We're talking about getting <laughs> shredded. Yes. Um, and everything that entails. I know we've done like a the bodybuilding basic series. And the gym basic series? We've done, like, a lot of series already. <laughs> like, in my brain, we haven't really done that many, but we did gym girl basics. months ba- now. Yeah, we did gym girl basics. Mm-hmm. We did... Did I just touch your foot? Did no. Did you footsies? <laughs> no, okay. No, no. <laughs> I was like, my feet are sweaty, so that's gross. Um, gym girl basics. Then we did the bodybuilding. Then we did Becoming Her, which we just ended. And now we're here. Now we're on the <laughs> Getting Shredded series. We thought it would be good to do this because... I'm shredding right now. I'm also cutting right now. Kendall's doing 75 hard. And this is something like these series, the intention behind them is that you can like come back to them whenever. Mm -hmm. If you need like a refresher on nutrition, if you need some like inspiration for training, yada, yada, yada. So in today's, we're teaching you, not really teaching because I'll put a disclaimer after this, but basically it's what to eat to lose weight. So The disclaimer is there are not certain foods that you have to eat in order to lose weight. I get a lot of DMs, and I don't know if you get this too, that they're like, just tell me exactly what foods to eat that'll like Mm -hmm. make me lose weight. As if like certain foods are labeled like weight loss foods. Yeah, like people think like eating celery is going to make you lose a pound. And I'm like, that's not how that works. (laughs) Yeah, it's just like a a filler food, if anything. But there are certain swaps that you can make that are a little bit less calories, maybe less fat and higher in protein that Mm -hmm. can make it easier for you to stick to a diet. So I'm going to go over like later and Kendall will add some of hers too because Kendall's like, oh, I got all the snacks. She's got all the snacks. She's (laughs) like snack queen. If Kendall could live (laughs) off a snack, she would. I do. That's why you're so much (laughs) like my little sister. Like it's unbelievable. Like the, the way that they are just similar, like my little sister goes to Target like every other day. Yeah, that's me. And gets snacks. Like her and her boyfriend like do snack runs. No, yeah, that's me. Yeah. So <laughs> basically where I want to start is like, well, how do we lose weight in general? So first off, you need to be in a caloric deficit. Now, what is a caloric deficit, you might ask? It is when you are eating fewer calories than you are burning. So there's a couple of different ways that you can be in a caloric deficit. So that means that you can either eat less calories (laughs) or you can train more, meaning your physical activity is higher, you're burning more calories, thus putting you in a caloric deficit, or you could do both. You can start eating healthier. Doing both is usually the healthiest route. That way you're not going too extreme on dropping calories or like doing hours of cardio. Yeah, and I used to say... My upper lip is sweating. (laughs) That happens to me all the time. So annoying. (laughs) I used to think, okay, only choose one Mm -hmm. to do instead of doing both. But a combination of both is perfect because that means that you can start improving your cardiovascular health, which is not only going to help your heart, but it's going to help you train intensely. Like when I am in the off season and there's been times where I just stopped doing cardio, I can't lift as heavy. Mm -hmm. And the reason is... Because I don't have the physical energy to do so. Like, I get winded. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way. So I, my intention is, I did it this last season, but my intention going into this offseason again is to do a balance between the two. You know, staying healthy, but also keeping, like, a mild amount of cardio. So this balance can be as simple as, like, dropping your calories just a little bit from, like, your maintenance level. And then adding in like 15 minutes of cardio, 20 minutes of cardio, you know, three to five times a week, depending on like your goals and how much time you have. But that's besides the point. So we actually go into depth like more about like a caloric deficit and like how to find it and blah, 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 blah in our episode called Let's Talk About Nutrition, Gym Girl Basics. Like I said at the beginning, these episodes are here for you so that you can go back and like refresh yourself on it. I'm just now realizing like how much I move my hands when I talk. <laughs> I've always noticed. Yeah. Um, I it, it's fidget. Just a part if of anyone being watches, <laughs> <laughs> if anyone watches the YouTube video, the entire episode, I'm typically twirling this little wire around my finger because my ADD yes. like needs to do something while you talk. So, so. my little sister, um, I think she sent it. My little sister is my assistant and she helps with the podcast. She helps with 
um, creating content. So basically, her and our videographer Ian. Oh my god, I'm so hungry right now. <laughs> I just noticed like how empty my stomach Aww. is. Ugh. <laughs> Grab a snack. I already had one. my breakfast. It was oh, just no. not enough. Anyways, so Chloe sends me and Kendall a message one day and was like. <laughs> It was a video of her, and she goes, me watching y'all's YouTube video, and it's her, like, fidgeting, like, <laughs> playing with her hair and, like, moving around. And it's hard when you're sitting here and you know a camera's on you. Like, yeah, yeah like, one of my like, nervous tics is, like, combing through my hair, twirling this around my finger. Yes, like you're just like, what do I do? Yeah. With, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> what do I do with these? <laughs> Anyways, so first let's talk about, like, fun foods. So... Fun foods such as like chips, ice cream, burgers, candy, these are so high in sugar, salt, and fat, and they encourage your body to want more. Like they're literally doing their job. That's why it seems so hard to stop eating the bag of chips when you're um, supposed to like stop halfway or you told yourself you were going to like only have a serving and you just like continue to eat it because it is so high in sugar, salt, and fat that your body like just continues to want more. That's why when the dessert menu comes and you're already full, you're like, let me take a look. Yeah. Because you know? it's different from what you just ate. So Let it's me. like also like switching into like sweets mode. And then people exactly. get into the habit of like, well, I can't have dinner without like having my dessert after. Like oh, you yeah. almost make it like a habit or like a ritual for yourself. Yeah. And then those are usually also the foods that like when you start cutting, if you start dieting, you crave the most. Yes. And I want to say now because like. I'm a big candy person and like I've allowed candy in my diet the last like year or two, mm -hmm. which is something I never allowed myself. Like growing up my family, like I had an almond mom, like we did not have candy. <laughs> <laughs> we did not have candy in the house. So it felt like, like a special moment for myself if I like bought myself candy. Yeah. Um, and I, since starting 75 hard, I'm cutting that out and like, at first it was hard. I was like, well, now you want the candy. <laughs> exactly. And like, I'm on my period this week and all I've wanted is like to go and get candy. And I'm like, I know the longer I go without it, the less those cravings will come. Cause you almost forget about Ex them. Exactly. And if you're having them, like one thing that seems to happen is especially when you're say you are in like a bulking phase or you're really just not watching what you're eating at all. And you are having a lot of these things on the regular, you crave them a lot more than you actually would crave healthy foods yeah. because it was such a staple in your diet. And when you eat healthy foods, nothing hits that dopamine like that other food did. That's like why I would get so stuck in like trigger warning for eating disorders. Um, I would get so stuck in like binge eating episodes because nothing felt as tasty and as yummy and gave me the dopamine hit that that kind of food did. It's mm -hmm. like a drug. It's like caffeine. The more of the caffeine that you have, the less that it starts to work and the more you need to have to have the same effect. Yeah. So instead of just having like a burger and being satisfied, now you need a burger and you need fries. Instead of having a burger and fries, you need burger, fries, and ice cream in order to have the same effect. Yeah. So it's just like a It really is like any spiral. other addiction. <laughs> and like is. usually uh, still on the trigger warning of eating disorders, usually when I would binge, I would try to I wouldn't allow myself the food I was actually craving. So I would eat a hundred things to make up for it. Yes. When in reality, I probably could have just had that thing in like a small quantity. Yes. But I feel like when you're dieting for so long, it's like hard to allow yourself to have like any sort of refeed. So exactly. that's another thing to consider, like everything in moderation. Like yes. we're going over what's healthy for you, what's not. If you're in bodybuilding prep, you have to be like 100% extreme. Right yes. now, yeah, if I am on my period and all I crave all week is sugar, I'd rather have one like piece of chocolate yeah. than 10 bags of rice cakes exactly. to make up for it. Because so. then you're going to have those 10 bags of rice cakes and still have the chocolate. Mm -hmm. And then you just had a lot of unnecessary calories when you yeah. could have just had the thing that you were craving. Yeah. And we're also at the very end of this going to go into a ton of swaps that you can make in order to help you when you are trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. um, and also we're going to have a completely different episode on like food cravings, like what happens when you're craving food and how to manage them in a whole other episode. So just wait for that one. Um, but back onto the subject of like these fun foods. When we're talking about this episode, there is nothing, we're not telling you not to have these things, like whatsoever. We just were telling you literally like sometimes you need to like just let yourself have these things. But we also know that you're listening to this, you're a girl boss, you want to reach your goals, you're becoming her, and 
we can't like have these meals every single day because then yeah. we're not going to be in alignment with our goals. So we're going to help you with those days where you do stay on track and what kind of swaps that you can make later on in the episode. But yeah, there's no wonder that there's like a fast food thing on like every corner. Like they make it so easily accessible so that like when you are on a time crunch, you know, when you are feeling lazy, when you don't have meals prep, that you can literally just swing in and grab it, get that dopamine hit and then crash later. Something that drives me nuts is that, and something I feel like I might actually go into business wise one day is that I want more healthy options or just like a healthy rep. My stomach's also growling now. <laughs> that was so You're loud. Like, <laughs> um, or like an actual like dedicated to health fast food style restaurant. Same. Especially that's open late at night because there are nights where like, or a day where like yes. I go through all my groceries, I have nothing and I'm hungry and it's yes. like 11 p.m. because I'm at like a night hour these days and I have zero options that are healthy. So yes. it's so easy to fall into like well i'll just grab fast food it's so true like i wish there <laughs> we're both Whoa. our gi health we're is struggling this today. morning <laughs> like i wish like chipotle is a pretty relatively healthy place it's really mm-hmm. good especially if you're like a bodybuilder i know a lot of bodybuilders like always go to chipotle because mm-hmm. there's like just white rice like chicken and stuff like that like i wish that was like a drive through where you can order that. I wish there were salad building places that were drive through. I wish there were like, I Just mean, I'm, more accessible like, and more affordable because, like, if you compare like McDonald's to like Salada, uh, you're paying like quadruple the amount for $20 that salad. Twenty dollars for a exactly. salad, and you're still hungry later yeah. for like. I, don't I know. get it. It's like high quality, but that's something I would like love to see improve. Yeah. In our society, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, I mean, what happens in your body when you're having these kinds of foods, the reason like it feels so good is because your blood sugar spikes like really, really quickly. And then it drops really quickly later because it spikes so fast when you first eat them. And this is what you uh, start to feel sluggish. You start to crash. Like you maybe feel a little bit like of tired or um, irritable. And then you're hungry faster. Mm -hmm. which is crazy. I would be so ravenous when I would have those kinds of foods because I would spike so hard and then crash so hard later. And then I'd be even hungrier because I wasn't getting actual like satiating food because it was so processed. Those like processed carbs, our body burns through so fast too. So you might be full for like five minutes and then you're hungry again so much sooner than if you were to have like potatoes and steak, you're going to stay full for like probably double the amount of time. It's literally so crazy. So my philosophy on like food swaps and things that I like to switch around when I'm on a shredding diet versus like an off season plan is how could I eat the most amount of food, but still stay in my calorie range. And for me, Mm -hmm. it's like high volume, nutritious foods that are low calories. I make everything a salad. Everything I eat, I turn into a salad just because I love, it's also visual for me to see the volume on my plate rather than just have like a tiny piece of chicken and a little bit of rice. I'll just put it on some lettuce. Yeah. (laughs) Like I'll always like, even in my, um, especially with my shredding, like I will have the rice, whatever amount of rice that I can have. Usually it's a lot smaller when I'm shredding. Yeah. Then I'll have the chicken and you're right. Like I'll add like tons of low calorie vegetables because now I'm way fuller and I'm going to stay satiated for longer and I'm not going to have that feeling of, oh my God, like I don't have any food. Like I'm so starving versus if I just had the chicken and just had the rice, I, of course, I'm going to be satiated for a certain amount of time because it's a really good, healthy, healthy options. But you're right. Adding that volume from like literally just shredded lettuce and making it like a Chipotle bowl and adding like vegetables on top like tomatoes and like pico de gallo like these things are super low calorie and it can make your meal so much fuller and more fun and you're safe fuller for longer Mm -hmm. which is the main thing that people are scared about when they start shredding down is like like being hungry hungry. so this can help you do that um what was i gonna say also i wanted to talk about like the hungry scale So this is something that's really important and we'll go into it a little bit more too when we do the episode that's on um, how to deal with food cravings. So let's talk about like from level one to level 10. Level one is like you're starving. Level 10 is like you're completely stuffed. So level one is starving. 
So you don't want to be here. <laughs> you don't want to be here. This is when everyone around me doesn't want to be around yeah. me. First of all, you're hangry. You're I'm starving. So you're like irritable. You might even get a headache. So like anything that you can do to avoid being starving is ideal because the choices that we make when we're starving tend to not be the healthiest. That's when you do eat more than you can actually have like in your stomach. Yeah. Basically your eyes are bigger than your stomach yeah. at this point. You're more likely to like skirt off the road and like go to fast food restaurants. Yep. So we don't want to be here. So packing snacks, eating more volume foods, not skipping meals is ideal. Now let's go to like level five. That's where we're like hungry. So you know it, your stomach growls, you get, you get maybe a little bit cranky, your Kendall and I like right now and your stomach might <laughs> yeah. be growling a little bit. It's kind of that like empty feeling. Level six through eight, this is where you want to be when you're satiated. Satiated is literally as simple as you're not hungry anymore. That's it. You've eaten until you're not hungry. There's no stuffed feeling. There's no uncomfortable feeling. This is ideally where you want to be. It's going to be different for everyone. Level six through eight-ish. Now, level nine through ten is you are stuffed. You are full. Your stomach hurts. Maybe you feel sluggish. That not fun. Maybe you're even like, why did I eat that much? We, yeah. don't, we don't want to be there. So the ideal place that we want to be is satisfied, just eating until we are not hungry anymore, level six through eight feeling. So now there are some foods and some things that you can swap out that can be a little easier when you are shredding because they're a little bit less in calories. So let's talk about like what proteins that are re really good. And Kendall, just add on whatever okay. things that you think. So I got you. Proteins that I am more likely to eat when I am in the off season would be like steak, beef, salmon. I can't think of any other ones, but things that I'll eat when I am shredding. And this is like what's on my meal plan currently. Shrimp, whitefish, swai. Swai is a really good. I've never white had fish. swai. It's I was like, so what? good. It doesn't taste fishy. It tastes like buttery and it like melts in your mouth. Chicken breast, egg whites, protein powder, all of these are lower in fat and super high in protein. Mm -hmm. This is why you see so many bodybuilders on their meal plans. It's literally like white fish and asparagus. Yeah. I do um, a lot of like ground turkey too. Or if, I you, if I do turkey. still like crave red meat or ground beef, I'll just do like the lower percent. Or if you're yeah. going to eat steak, like get the sirloin instead of like a, maybe a more like fatty cut. So like exactly. just even little changes like that can make a big difference. Your, like, your phone's getting blown up right now. Why am I getting blown up? I have it on airplane mode. That shouldn't oh. be happening. Yeah, it's weird. Anyways, yes. So we're not saying that you can't have any of these things in your meal. I definitely have some meals in my meal plan that I have beef in them or I have steak in them, but it's not all of my meals. So right now I literally have five meals a day. Four of them have the white fish or the shrimp in them, and then one of them has like the beef or the steak. So instead of all of my meals being really high in fat, higher in calories, I only have like one of them in. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a simple swap that I make. Now let's talk about some carbs. Before we do, too. I want to add like protein is usually the macronutrient that most like everyday quote unquote people lack the most. So if there's anything like even if it is ground beef or steak, like as long as you're getting protein in, that's yeah. super important because a lot of people are like a little malnutritioned on the protein front. And it also keeps you full the longest out of it's all true. the macronutrients. So like I, I, is it first? Yeah. For those dieting, like just a little like eating life hack. If you are someone that like, once you sit down to eat, you get like ravenously hungry, yeah. try to eat your protein first. Cause it's it true. is more filling and then move on to like your coffee. I just like choked on my own spit. Yep. Your carbs, yep, your veggies, did. and your fats like second. So that way you can get like something a little heavier in your system first. I never noticed, but I actually do that, which yeah. is crazy. So like some of my meals will be like white fish, vegetables, and then there's like a little portion of carbs. Sometimes I, in my mind, I just saved it because I like saving the carbs yeah. for last. But 
you're so right. Then I'm eating it and I'm actually like, okay, I finally feel satiated. Yeah. And it feels really, really, really good. Because if you're going <laughs> to leave anything left over on your plate, like some days we aren't crazy hungry. Yeah. hungry. Some days we aren't to that like starving point. Um, so you don't finish what's on your plate. So as long as you eat your protein is always how I viewed it yes. of like, let's make sure I get like the most important macronutrient in first. Yeah. And then if I leave some like rice over that's not exactly. like that's not going to hurt my progress exactly protein is like it's definitely the building block to building muscle and most of their our meals are like surrounded by protein mm-hmm. like even when you go to restaurants like they're all centered around whatever the protein dish is at least they typically are should be um and one other thing that I wanted to do, like, kind of like, I guess it's a hack, like, I don't really know. But when I am prepping for a show, um, I completely forgot what my hack was. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Great hack. You said something about like, m- making eating the protein first. Oh, it was about protein powder. So like you said, a lot of people do struggle with getting protein in. Uh, especially when they're started. And one good rule of thumb is one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Mm -hmm. So if I weigh 150 pounds, I'm going to have 150 grams of protein per day. I know that that's not simple for people when they first get started, especially if you're not used to it. So using protein powder to help you get to that point Mm -hmm. is awesome. But there might be a point in your shred where you're getting like super hungry. So what I do is I swap out the protein powder and I put in whole protein like white fish, mm-hmm. shrimp, tilapia. I things I rather like that. eat my food than drink it. But Same. yes, if it is hard for you, like yes. starting with drinking it or having it in a form like yeah. that or like putting protein powder in your oats, just something where it's like almost hidden exactly. can be like a good. Habit. Like when I started this prep. I was only having four meals a day in my off season and they were higher, you know, higher calorie meals because I had it. And then I switched to six meals and (coughs) it was like maintenance calories at the beginning and I was having trouble getting them in. So on my meal plan, my coach would give me an option. He would say like 25 grams of protein powder or 100 Mm -hmm. grams of white fish. And I would pick the protein powder just because I was like, it's easy, I can drink it and I can get my meals down. But now I'm getting to the point where I'm hungry. You want that solid food. I do not drink the protein powder anymore. I always go for the solid food because I'm hungrier. So that's Mm -hmm. just a little extra tip. So now let's go into some carb swaps that you can make. So some good carbs to have when you're shredding can be oats, cauliflower rice, rice cakes, and tons of vegetables. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm not saying not to have sweet potato, white rice, but I'm showing you some lower calorie carb options that will keep you fuller for longer and make you feel like you're having more food when you're really not. Yeah, (laughs) which is even like little things like I learned and you can I recommend everyone doing like food allergy tests or like a biome test, just some way to like check your gut health, because like I can't have cauliflower. So like cauliflower rice, yes, would make me really full, but like also sick. So not worth it. Um, But I learned that like brown rice is just like a little bit better on your digestion than white rice. So even those little simple changes can make you a little fuller for longer. It's very true. I mean, the reason that white rice is white is because they bleach it. Which, mm-hmm. re- which takes out all of the fiber. All, like, every yes. nutrient in it. <laughs> yeah, and we all know, like, white rice tastes better than brown rice. I'm just mm-hmm. going to put it right there. It just does, the in my opinion. The texture is so much better. It's just better. Um, but, yeah, those small changes that you can make. Like, right now, on my meal plan, I could either have, I can have, like, 25 grams. Like, for example, say my breakfast, I have 25 grams of carbs in it. So I can either have that in like the form of like white rice or I can have that in the form of oats. Mm -hmm. So in my brain, I'm like, okay, if I have that much 25 grams of carbs and oats, I get a bigger bowl of oats than I would just a teeny tiny portion of white rice. So I always go for the oats because it makes it keeps me fuller for longer because I'm having like I'm getting to eat more food. I also so this used is just to a little put, thing that I do. <laughs> like I used to love oats and I need to get back into them. Um if I can find a gluten-free version, I guess. Um what was I going to say? Oh, I always put like this is not when I'm in prep, but yeah. like if you're like everyday cutting dieting, I feel like it's still okay. I would put like no sugar syrup and like cinnamon in yeah, my that's what oats I do every day. So good. It's amazing. It like makes it like a like a dessert in the morning. Yes. And that curbs a lot. Of, like, again, we'll go into cravings in a different episode, but that does curb a lot of my like sugar cravings yes. if I'm getting it early on in the day. Exactly. Like I, that 
I swapped out all of my meals for oats instead of white rice because it's giving me that little bit of like sugar craving that mm -hmm. I have and I'm staying fuller for longer by doing that and I love it. It's yeah. awesome. So now some fats that you can do, some swaps that you can make can be like fat-free cottage cheese, fat-free cheese, like literally fat-free cheese, or PB2, which is the powdered peanut butter. Obviously, you can still have all the full fat things. You can do whatever the hell you want. But these are some swaps that I make in my shredding season so that I can still have these things, but a little bit less calories. Yeah. PB2 is, I love. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it on like rice I haven't rice bought cakes. it in a while because I do eat like the whole thing in yeah. a very short amount of time, but it's yeah. so good. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> I'm also like, I'm very simple with my fats, avocado. Yeah. And like, I get definitely a lot of my sauces I use because I'm a big, like, I need a full different experience every meal. So if I'm having chicken and rice for like three mm. different meals that day, I'll just use different sauces. So I will reserve some of like my fats for I do things not like do that. that. I would not. I like do. That. I love sauce. I am like, <laughs> I'd rather have zero calorie um, condiments, which we'll go into in a second, mm -hmm. than like adding extra fats from condiments. Like I'd rather eat more There's food than condiments. There's just this one green sauce that is so yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. And it like, yeah, I use it as like a salad dressing since yeah. most salad dressings have dairy that I can't have. I also used to make like this like creamy sriracha where it was literally like one or two tablespoons of Greek yogurt. And then I'd put like, that's sriracha smart. or something in it and then some like seasonings I'm that i would like that. and it was pretty good that and i also good. do it with like avocado so i put like a half of a baby avocado with like a two one or two tablespoons of greek yogurt and make like a creamy mm -hmm. um guacamole and they also make this like seasoning that's called holy guacamole seasoning mm -hmm. and i put it in there and it was really good low, low i'm calorie. trying that yeah <laughs> oh, I, wait, I can't have yogurt anymore oh Crap. geez my stupid dairy-free life kindle's life <laughs> I was like, why haven't I tried that? And I like literally went in the yogurt aisle yesterday and then I was like, why am I here? Why am I here? <laughs> I was like, these are going to cause more pain. You can get non-dairy. That's true, but like it's gross. Not as good. <laughs> They're kind of, the dairy. texture is not the best. No. Okay. Well, now let's talk about some food swaps that you can make. I have tons of ideas for food swaps. Like one of the Me things too. that I wish that I can do is literally like go grocery shopping with people that are wanting to lose weight and mm -hmm. see what they pick out and, and pick out a swap for them. Mm -hmm. Like I'd be so good at that. I usually send a swap list to like all of my new clients. Uh -huh. So I'll like give them, are you craving or do you usually eat yeah. this? Eat this instead. And yes. it's just like, that tiny little change that like, even if it's like a hundred calorie difference, that's a hundred calorie less you're having that day, yes, which is leading can, to that weight loss. Yeah. A hundred calorie deficit. You're still in a deficit. Mm -hmm. So it can literally be such a huge difference. So I'm going to, I'm literally going to talk about like some of the biggest things that people crave, and then we'll talk about some swaps for them. So first I of all, this, this chips. is where I thrive. Kendall thrives <laughs> chips. So some swaps that you can make is literally the Oroville Redenbacher Smart Pop Popcorn. You literally get, so say like one tiny chip of bag, a bag of Lay's can get you like a giant bag of popcorn mm -hmm. and it's still not the same amount of if calories. If you have been following me on Instagram for a long time, you know popcorn like, is my everything. Literally. I... It is the best for me because it's one of those like big volume, volume foods. Things. Your eyes think you're eating a lot, yes. but it really is very low calorie. And it's especially if you're the person like me and Kendall who like when you're like relaxing for the evening, you just like need something to do mm -hmm. and you have this giant bowl of popcorn. You could share it with your partner if you are a demon because I would <laughs> never not. and you can literally just sit there and it's so low calorie, so high volume. You get to do something with your hands and it's it's great and what you can do to make it taste a little bit better because people i know the reason they love popcorn is because it's so buttery and salty i just get this not can't believe it's not butter spray that's smart spray it in there do a little shush put some sea salt I'm in not it. a butter popcorn it's amazing. girl i don't know why are you a sweet i'm no i'm like a plain you have you have issues <laughs> like <laughs> um i just buy smart pop now but yeah. i don't know why in my old apartment i would like insist on popping my own popcorn like every day okay. like literally every night <laughs> made it a whole experience yes and i wouldn't add anything i would like maybe spray the bottom of the pan and that was it mm, Kendall's it was a weird face she's got, <laughs> she's got demons she's like i love eating cardboard i'm so weird there's also a way that you can make it sweet you can make li mm -hmm. like make it uh cinnamon sugar so at whatever grocery store you have they always have like a cinnamon sugar mixture mm -hmm. like a giant 
con like it's not it's like a, in a salt i know what you're talking thing. about yeah and you can spray it with the can't believe it's not butter spray that on her you get a Smart. sweet you get a sweet version you can also, also be like me and make a spicy version <laughs> and add that pickles. does sound good you can literally oh, no I longer I <laughs> no longer sounds good <laughs> if you're mexican you'll like this you can add like tahine on it with a little bit of butter spray there's also like i used to do valentina which is a low <laughs> I calorie i just picture you offering sauce. me like popcorn at your house like we're it's going like, to the movies <laughs> this weekend <laughs> and you're like oh i brought you popcorn and it's pickle flavor. There's, there's pickles like no I'm like literally would put pickles in it like I chop up pickles and put it in there and there'd be hot sauce on it I'm like here you go and tahine is oh so good oh my god I believe you yeah it just I wasn't ready for that piece of information they also sell these things I don't know what they're called but you'll know what I'm talking about they're usually in like the popcorn aisle at the yes. grocery store they're like little have you seen, do you know what I'm talking about they're like little popcorn flavoring things like that's what they are yeah exactly they have like Okay, here's your turn to judge me. They had a ranch one. So no, I would good. totally do that. It is so good. That's another thing that I would do. I would literally just get like the ranch seasoning giant bottle mm -hmm. and I would put the spray on it. Because if you put the butter spray on it, it sticks to the popcorn better. Yeah, yeah I love that. Smart. Yeah. yeah. You, <laughs> Our pop. I could do a whole popcorn me. episode. I know. That was a lot of information on just popcorn. Anyway, so another one that you can do is you can do the Quest protein chips. You can mm -hmm. do seaweed chips. They come in those little packages. The teriyaki one is so good. And you can literally get like a giant package and there's like 12 in there. And they're also pretty high in protein, to be honest. Exactly. They're so good. And then another one that I don't think is on here yeah. is like Rice Cakes also makes like the little chip version now. And like the delicious... The, the brand is literally called, like, Delicious, and they have, like, birthday cake flavored, s'mores flavored. They're literally mini, like yeah. the size of a quarter. Yeah, I have had those. those are good. But there's multiple brands now. Yeah, there's tons of them. Yeah, so that's, like, another option where if, if like, it's really chips that you're craving, like, that gives you that, yeah. like, I'm having chips, but they're definitely lower yeah. in fats because they're not fried and exactly. lower in, like, sugar because there's not a lot of additives and stuff like One that. One thing that I did the other day, too, which was unintentional, I over-fried my carrots in the air fryer and it made like sweet potato fries and mm -hmm. i was like oh shit these are fucking fire i used to make my sweet potatoes like that i would add like garlic and salt and air fry them for like a little too long where they would get like almost crispy and pretend they're french fries <laughs> oh yeah they're freaking good okay that was a lot about on chips so now let's talk about ice cream swaps you can literally make protein ice cream the creamy have you seen it Oh, the ninja, ninja creamy yeah, that, i need to I buy need that that too that's on my list yeah. of like things i want to buy for myself this month <laughs> yes that thing is awesome but literally a simple simple way to make protein ice cream scoop a protein powder if you want to make the protein thicker you can add an ingredient called guar gum it's spelled with an x and it's a thickening agent that's how you say that guar gum and it's spelled with an x yes I've called it like xanthum. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No? There's guar gum <laughs> okay. and then there's xanth xanthum okay. gum. I was like, am I that there's wrong? There's xanthum gum and a guar gum. Okay, wait, I've heard it two they're, ways. They're both thick. Yeah, they're both thickening <laughs> they're agents. Um, I, I know that. Bob's Red Mill, which is like a, mm -hmm. usually they make oats, but they make it one and it comes in a packet. So you can do that. Adding frozen fruit is the best for it because you want that frozen consistency. And then adding a little bit of ice and that's it. Mm -hmm. One thing that I like to do when I'm done with it, I'll add like the PB2 powder on top of it, sugar-free syrup. I've made yeah. my own ice cream. Yeah. So low calorie and literally one pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream is like minimum of a thousand calories plus. It's in, it's actually insane how and you calorie get dense ice cream is. triple the amount of protein ice cream for not even that much calories. It's yeah. not even a thousand. It's like yeah. still. It's like a couple hundred, hundred. if that, yeah. depending on how much you use. Yes. I used to do the same thing. I would always do like chocolate protein powder, add like PB2 in yep. or on top or even real peanut butter. Like if it's a small enough quantity, I'm pretty sure you're, you're doing fine. Exactly. Um, like if you're already making that big of a switch, it's still going to be a lot lower calorie than real ice cream. And then also like toppings, like um, with 75 hard, I'm like trying to think of creative ways to still have, like I'm such an ice cream fanatic. Mm -hmm. So it's like the perfect way for me to like get that fixed. So like even adding like a tiny bit of like chocolate chips on top, like yeah. that's not going to ruin your yeah. whole diet it's if it's like added into this like protein mixture. It's amazing. 
I love it. I mean, then there's also the obvious stuff that's like Halo Top, the Enlightened brand, which is great. You can also just buy your own um, molds at home mm-hmm. and make your own Greek yogurt frozen popsicles. So what I would do is literally just add like frozen fruit at the bottom of the mold, fill it with Greek yogurt, and then every night I get a frozen pop. There's like a trend going around on TikTok right now, and I don't know like what the macros would actually look like, but I'd imagine there are still a really good swap where people are taking like really finely cut up fruit, I think, mixing it with Greek yogurt. I think they freeze that, then pour like melted, like little like chocolate over it, freeze that again. And they're like these little like ice cream oh, fruit chocolate bites. That's so cool. So that's another, there's, so go on Pinterest. There are a ton of like so healthy substitute options on there too, if you want to so get many. creative or if you're sick of Halo Top. Yeah, that's true. Now, Let's talk about other dessert options. So you can do sugar-free Jello with whipped cream, literally whipped cream, like even just like the spray whipped cream. It's so low calorie. This is my mom's favorite. I've seen her do it since I was little. And I think she, like the big trend was like the Atkins diet. Mm-hmm. So I learned that that from my mom and it's it's literally so good and so low calorie. You can also just make it yourself or you could buy the little packages and have like one every night or so. Greek yogurt with sugar-free syrup and berries. What other kind of desserts do you like making? Rice um, rice cakes <laughs> with like peanut butter. Kendall yeah. literally <laughs> has rice cakes in her bloodstream. For real. I go through phases, but like I bought them last week and I'm back on that She's phase. When I'm it. dieting, it's just like the best like go-to thing. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Quest has so many different like pretty sure. macro-friendly dessert yes. substitutes. They make like peanut butter cups. Yep. Do they taste like Reese's? No, but when you're cutting, it does the job. Like all of those little things where like, I've definitely had people that aren't cutting or aren't like insanely overly healthy try those things and they're like, this is disgusting. And I'm like, when you're dieting, like you're gonna want them. Like like when you forget what a real Reese's tastes like and you want that fix, like they do a perfect job. Their cookies are so good. Yeah. Um, For me, I'm like, um, at least I can have this. Yeah, exactly. This is great. The, they'll go through like the healthier, like gluten-free section at like your grocery store, because I'll find like cookies and I'll look at the macros and it's like five cookies for like 60 calories. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sick. Do they taste like real cookies? Again, not really. But like when you're cutting, it does that job. Yep. And there's also like tons of recipes online of Mm -hmm. like low, low calorie options that you can get for desserts. Um, now let's go into like pizza. One thing that people crave is pizza. Uh, You could do cauliflower pizza. You could do a pita bread pizza. The way that I've been making my pizzas in the off season, there's this like, I don't know the brand, but it's a lower calorie pita bread. Mm -hmm. And it's like a big oval shape. And I'll do a low calorie sauce on it. I'll do fat free cheese. I'll do like little pepperonis, which are all really low in calories, surprisingly. And I air fry it. Literally so good. So good. It sounds good. It's amazing. Not to be like literally only talking about Quest, but their pizzas are also pretty macro friendly. I didn't know they made pizzas. Mm -hmm. They make everything. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) This is just a Quest brand deal. (laughs) sponsor. Um, But their pizzas taste good and they also, they're not, I don't think they're certified gluten free, so I can't eat them anymore, but I used to all the time. Um, And then I'll like find weird little, like they have these gluten free just for me. So (laughs) if you're not gluten free, I'm sure you could do like the pita route, but same, I would like almost make my own where I'd find these like pre-made thin little like pizza rounds and then add my own toppings. Then you can control the quantity too and track your macros and see if you're going over. Those are really good for like a quote unquote cheat meal or a refeed meal where you don't want to like feel super full or sluggish after because they're still fitting within your macros. They're just like obviously a little more unhealthy than eating like the normal like veggies and chicken. Exactly. That's true. I did so many different like flavors when I would, when I went through my little pizza phase, I'd do like a buffalo chicken where I'd literally just chop up the chicken breast that I already had at home. Mm -hmm. And I would do like Frank's buffalo and then put the cheese on it. And Zach even tried it and he doesn't like low calorie things. He likes full calorie everything. Mm -hmm. And he was like, this is pretty good. Can you make me one next time? I'm like, oh really? (laughs) Homemade stuff's usually better than like process trying to be healthy things sometimes. So yeah, if you can find recipes, that's usually the best. Big facts. Okay. Now let's talk about subs for burgers and fries. So one thing that I love doing is making a burger bowl. So I'll literally just do. That's smart. Yeah. I'll literally do beef, 
93.7 lean beef. I'll put a bunch of lettuce in it. I'll do tomatoes. I chop up even pickles. Like everything that would be in a burger, Mm -hmm. I would put in it. And sometimes I'd even do like fat-free cheese. And I'd put the fat feed trees first on the beef and then warm it up in the microwave a little bit so it melted over it and then put all the cold stuff on. Yeah. And I'd even literally put mustard and ketchup it's on it. It's me so hungry. I'm s- literally starving. <laughs> Today's my low calorie Aww. day because it's my rest day. And, and we're making you talk about food. I know. And I'm getting too excited about it. I'm like, I know it is. It's burger bowl. Burger bowl. <laughs> and it's so good. Um, you can also do sweet potato fries in the air fryer. You mm-hmm. can also, if you don't have that much like wiggle room with carbs on your diet. You can do the thing with the um, carrots that I told you. Yeah. Slice them like french fries, put them in the air fryer, or you can just bake them. It sounds sad and like it wouldn't be true, but I swear when I make my um, like green beans, cause they're like long and skinny anyway, yes. a lot of garlic, a lot of salt, yep. air fry them until they're crunchy. Yes. They're basically French fries. I literally had those yesterday. <laughs> that was my yeah. favorite. I'm when on a I, green bean kick right yeah, now. Like I'm I go green. through phases with those two it's and like weird. vegetables, but yeah, I in prep that would help me a lot. Get like some sort of like crunchy, it's just, salty it's fix. texture. Yes, sometimes it's, it's literally fully. just texture. And then for me, like burgers are something I couldn't have anyway because yeah. of my gluten allergy. But making like a lettuce wrap burger is like a great so solution. Good. Like still make it the same yeah. way, just. Take out the bread because that's really the highest calorie part. Exactly. And like even if you didn't want to take out bread, but you didn't want to have like the bread that has like tons of calories and isn't that the Sarah Lee brand, they have like 45 calorie slices, that's which is good. crazy. So if you want to, you can literally just make your own little burger and have like a lower calorie bun. Still get the same I've also things. never tried them and don't know the macros, so don't quote me, but there is like a bread I've always seen in the bread aisle that's like some sort of protein bread. Dave's you know Killer what I'm Bread. About? Is that yeah, it? Yeah, I use Dave's Killer Bread all the time. Oh, okay. I love that shit. So that's like another like yeah. just slightly better for you option. Exactly. And if you struggle with getting protein in, literally one uh, bagel has like maybe 19 grams of protein. Don't quote me on that, but I love those. Mm-hmm. Those are freaking awesome. So now swaps for nuts. So, like, I think a lot of people think that nuts are healthy, and they very much are. They're just calorie dense. But they're just very calorie dense, and you get this teeny tiny portion for so many calories. So some things that you can get, like, literally, think of a handful of nuts. And now think of three times that, but watermelon, apples, strawberries, blueberries. Would you rather have a teeny tiny handful of nuts or crap ton of fruit? It's about the same calories. You know, I didn't realize I'd do this, but I think – that's what I crave is like having like like salty like some sort of like yeah. almonds cashews peanuts. Yes, I get. I think it's Chex Mix brand or Cheerio brand. They have like a peanut butter flavored one, or I've even gotten the chocolate ones when mm-hmm. I'm craving. I'm a big cereal person. That gives that still like you can have like a pretty big bowl full, and like I eat it dry. Yeah, so I'll just sit there and pick at it, and it gives that same effect of like having like that small like. Very grazing true. snack <laughs> exactly it's like the popcorn yeah exactly it's like the popcorn. I, yeah but i think that's what i'm trying to substitute in my brain i've never like made that correlation of like why i was always like wanting it yeah, so, yeah. let's talk about burrito swaps literally kendall already kind of said it before making like the lettuce wraps or you can either get a low calorie pita or a tortilla add lettuce protein vegetables whatever low cal sauces that you want you stay fuller for longer even if you add especially if you add vegetables in it they're so huge and Mm -hmm. there's so so little calories and you're gonna stay so full i love those in the off season they're so amazing and then i could just like get creative with it and add whatever stuff i want yeah which is great. I think it's just what you put in it. Like yeah. burritos can be healthy and good for you if they're full of like veggies and protein. I exactly. think it's only when you're adding like copious amounts of like guac and sour cream. Yes, and like the way that Chipotle. Just yeah, <laughs> exactly. You could still add That's all that sad. stuff into it. Just like watching how yes. much you're putting in. <laughs> That's another thing I've heard. Like plain Greek yogurt can be like a good sour it's cream true. substitute. Very, very true. Some things that I like to do too, like when I do want the taste of like one of those things is I'll do like a tablespoon of the actual thing, which is sour cream, and then two tablespoons of like the Greek yogurt. So I'm mixing it together and I'm like, it tastes kind of more like sour cream than mm-hmm. it does like the other thing. Um, now uh, let's talk about condiments. My favorite. Condiments Big sauce is where people can get real stuck because mm-hmm. condiments have so many calories. If you just look at the back of the bottle, there's 
tons. Usually like salad dressings too. Oh, I don't think people realize how like dressings. calorie dense that is because like a lot of yes. them are milk based. Um, and that's something I don't think I even, I knew they were calorie dense. That's something I would never have in like a, a bodybuilding prep. But if I was like in my off season, I would like pour that stuff on it. Mm-hmm. I don't think I realized how high in calorie it was until I took dairy out of my diet and started finding like the dairy free dressings. And I'm like, whoa, these are way better for you. It's very true. (laughs) And like some options that you can do is like there has the zigger. Wait, wait, wait. It's the. What's my back? Something (laughs) Hughes. Remember the barbecue sauce? G Hughes. Is it the one with the guy on it? Yes. Yeah. I still buy that one. He has three different flavors, like a regular sweet and spicy. And there's another one. Ketchup, zero sugar ketchup. Mustard is very low in calories. I love her ketchup. Frank's hot sauce. (laughs) Cholula. There are literally so many. And if you have Walden Farms in your grocery store, sometimes it's in the health food section. Mm -hmm. They have a bajillion of sauces that are so low Some of them are really gross. Some of them are really gross. And they (laughs) taste- But like their maple syrup and stuff. Yeah, those are fucking fire. Yeah. That's like what I'll put on my um, oats. Mm -hmm. It's like the sugar-free syrups. But yeah, and then a substitutes for pancakes is the last one can be protein French toast or the Kodiak protein pancakes. Those are pretty awesome. They're a little bit higher in calorie because it's like a pre-made box, Mm -hmm. but- they're awesome. I have them in the off season all the time. I'll have them on season before I start like getting really, really close to show. And the way that you can make protein French toast is literally get the Sara Lee 45 calorie bread, dip them in egg whites, put um, sugar, which is like whatever zero calorie sweetener you want, mm-hmm. and put like cinnamon, Big nutmeg, mix it all in together, flip them into the protein bread, and then fry it. It's amazing. Sugar-free syrup. Whatever toppings you want, it's fire. I'm so hungry. <laughs> God. Well, we need to be done. <laughs> I know. These are great. Well, I hope you guys learned a little bit of some swaps that we make when we are shredding down. As always, we love you all so much, and you are more powerful than you think. Bye. Bye.